So, I'm going to attempt to balance my connecting rods and the piston assembly. Um, this is the inline six engine. So, from what I gather, you don't run bob weights on an inline engine. Um, these these uh, cylinders have companion cylinders. So, one and six, two and five, and three and four run at exactly the same stroke. So they're they're bo they're both run at the at the same time. So each set of two is set 120 degrees apart on the crank. So from what I've gathered, the crank is balanced independently of the connecting rods. It, it's set to zero, so the crank is balanced on its own to uh, just the weight of the crank. You don't take into account the pistons or the connecting rods. And I'm going to try to balance the connecting rods as closely as I can get them. Um, because of my because of my bad luck because of my bad luck when I ordered these piss not the pistons the connecting rods oh, let's go over the connecting rods so I ordered seven remanufactured connecting rods from Cummins for a 24 valve engine and they're all pretty good condition obviously because they're remanufactured um, my luck is I did not get six of them that were the same weight. I got three that were really close. I got two that were under. And I got one that was over. So instead of getting all from, from the same origin, I think I got four of them from Mexico, one from Japan, and one from Brazil. So one of the ones from Mexico and one from Brazil were lighter than the other three from Mexico and then the one from Japan was actually a lot heavier than the rest of them. So what I'm going to do is, like I say, try to balance them out. Now, I already pre-measured most of these things. I'm going to re-measure them again in uh, grams and try to get them all to pretty close, pretty close tolerance. So. Uh, I'm gonna create a chart, something like this. So this is for uh, the pistons, because I already I already gapped the rings. So the rings are all gapped for uh, each piston or each cylinder already. So I'm going to measure the cylinder with the piston rings that are on there, and I'm gonna get to wait for them. I measure the pins, get away for the pins. I don't expect the pins to be any real difference in them. Um, and then I'm going to measure the connecting rod total, small end, and big end. And uh, I'm going to try to get them all pretty close. I don't know if it's going to make a difference if everything is exactly the same. I'm going to try to match, obviously, the lighter, the heavier piston. Because I think I have one heavier piston with the lightest connecting rod. And I think that will match the lightest connecting rod to the next lightest one i think they were off like five five grams or five ounces or something like that so i'm going to try to put those together so it's as an assembly like i said i don't i don't think that by using a heavier piston it's going to make a difference on on the lighter rod so i, I think it'll kind of balance it out so i'm, I'm I guess that with, with that one, I'm going to try to make it like a total unit will be the weight. Um, instead of trying to make everything the same weight, I'm going to try to just get the, the assemblies the same weight. Uh, I've, I've seen, I've measured, I, I didn't measure, I weighed the, the crack cap rods that came out of that engine. And I think some of them were, they, they weren't exactly the same either. I think they were off, some were off 12 grams. Uh, one was off 12 grams, I think. So they weren't all exactly the same anyway. So I don't think it has to be exactly the same. I mean, this isn't a high RPM engine. I just, I just don't like the idea of the the giant gap between one of them. But I mean, I've seen that gap since somebody else put a total on the Cummins form, and they they listed. I mean, the only thing I could find of anyone else who was measuring theirs, they they listed total weights. 
and I think one of the original ones that were in his engine were actually like 45 grams off from the rest of them. So I don't think the 40 that I'm off is really that big of a deal, but like I say, I'm going to try to get him closer just just to get him closer because I, I don't really like it being that far off. I mean, I guess technically, if if I matched the heavier one up with the really light one on the same companion cylinder, it might balance it out that way too. I don't know if that would make a difference. So I think part of it, the, the fact that I, I'm not, I don't do this every day, so I don't exactly know what I can or cannot do, and it's hard to find information on that anyway, so. But anyway, so you see kind of some of the weights I have. The, these were the, the machined ones that I had just measured, and you can see I won them off like 40, 40 grams. But I'm off 40, 40 from the lightest one, so if I take the lightest one and I put it with the heavier piston, then I think I'll be more close to the one that was from Brazil. And uh, when I do that, then I think I'll only be off 35. So we're getting closer. I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to balance them out as an assembly. But that something that I guess that's a question that would be. So if I took the 40 and I matched it up with the, the with the lightest one, would that now all of a sudden be 25? Because or not 25, but 20, 20 gram difference. If I matched it up with this one on the same companion, I mean it's still kind of balanced on that rotation even though it's not balanced all the way through it would still be balanced on that side but i mean would that kind of throw throw it into some weird harmonic i'm not sure but anyway so we're going to stop measuring these and uh see what we get all right so we'll measure these i'm using grams grams are obviously a pretty small measurement um i didn't label this one so i'm not sure which one this one i think this is number six because i didn't label it it was the last piston I measured. Alright, this is number one. So number one, I get 1.251 kilograms. One or what? 1251 grams. That's piston one. This is number two. Point five. Oh. Zero. This one, this one is number five. Two five zero. Back in my towels. Number four. Point two four seven. One's number three. One, two, five, zero. So this one must have been number six without the label. I think this one was the lighter one. One point two four four. So he had two that were under one that was a one gram over. I mean, that's not a big deal. So I got the one that was six. This is what I was thinking. So this one that was six under, I was going to match this one up with the heavier piston or the heavier connecting rod to kind of reduce the overall weight of it. And uh, I think that will 
kind of get us closer to a balanced unit. I guess I'll, I'll measure the pins. I don't think I'm going to have an issue with the pins. They're so small, I can't see them being way off. All right, so measure the pins. Is. The 638, 637, 639, 639, this one number one. So we'll see two is six forty. touching these and get my fingers on them. Let's see, this is three. Six, 40. I'm sure they're probably all the same. Six thirty nine. This is number five. Six. Six thirty-nine. That gives us a little bit of extra wiggle, right? I mean, what's a what's a gram? I guess you want them balanced to around a gram, or I think I think I saw something saying that to. An engine builder magazine says to try to get them within an ounce, which is 28 grams.
which I mean, to be perfectly honest, they're all pretty much within 28 grams except for that last, that last one from Japan. Which I guess it doesn't, it just has to be within 28 grams and it ain't really that big of a deal, but let's, uh, let's weigh out the connecting rods next. Let's turn that back on. Number one. Uh, 2095. 2095. 2095. That's number one. 2095. This one is one from Mexico. So you got brand new bushings in there. That's nice. This one is number two. This is a one from Brazil. Two thousand ninety nine. Two thousand ninety nine. I'm sticking a bag in the bag, doesn't matter. Taking them out in a minute anyway. Two thousand ninety nine. Let's see what this one is. This is number three. Write that one down. That was 2099. This was number three, thousand one hundred and thirty-five. This one is Japan. It actually feels a lot bigger too than the other ones. Like it just seems bigger. So this one four. This one is one from Mexico. Two thousand one hundred and sixteen. So when I first measured these, I did it in the bags because I didn't know if I was going to keep them or return them. I didn't want to open them. So the bags could have played a part in that too. This is number one again. I forgot to write it down. 1095. Number five. This one from Mexico. Two thousand one hundred and This one is from Mexico. Two All right. So, I'm 
gonna figure out which ones I want to kind of put where and then I'm gonna see how much weight I need to take off and then I'll measure I guess we should measure big ends and small ends right and then I could see where I want to take the weight off of it I don't know if it's gonna be make a difference depending on where it is um, so 2095 is my lightest and we go 99 116 17 18 and then 2135 so that's that's the one from Japan that was the heaviest so you can see I'm 40 40 grams off between this one and this one but if I take the heavier piston which was six grams less right or the lighter one that was six grams less. Is that how that's gonna work? I don't know, you know, when I measured these before, I got a different idea. I might have, you know what, I might have added it backwards and I might have added the six grams, which I was gonna add to this one, and I thought that would bring it up, but it actually it was a little bit lighter, was what it was. So Okay, go for it, come on. So, I'll figure out my combinations of all this, and then I'll figure out how much I have to take off of where, and then I guess I can measure these. And being that, being that the weights of the big ends and the small ends, I don't believe come into account for the balancing of the crank because like I say you balance the crank on its own and then the pistons and the connecting rods are all set at an equal distance because it's not it's not a V configuration where it's it's like kind of opposing and everything's kind of running around though there, there's like a formula that you have to take it's like like when you when you figure out your bob weights I think you take the weight of the, the the large end of the crank of the connecting rod and then half of the small end and then that's how you figure out your weights for your bob weight and then you put those on and then you balance the crank with the bob weights which takes into account the weights of the connecting rod and the pistons but being that this is an inline six I think it's actually kind of easier and you don't have to do that so that's the way I'm going to do it I'm going to do it as though the crank is balanced on its own and then we just have to create an assembly that is the same weight so like I say so it balances anyway so I'm gonna figure out what I got to do with what I need and add add subtract and figure out my combinations all right so I added the different weights of the pistons so I mean if you want, you can de-weight your pistons and do all that. I'm not, I don't want to mess around with the pistons, drilling holes, or filing, or doing any of that stuff. I want to do as little as possible to get what I need to get. So that's why I'm just kind of doing it as an assembly. I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll make a difference doing it the way I'm doing it, as opposed to making everything weigh the same. The only thing is, I just have to keep those with them. Um... And like I say, with a different type of crank orientation, like a like a V8 or a V6, obviously the things have to weigh the same because when you balance it, you balance them with the weights on the crank and it's all balanced as an assembly because the way this is done, it's balanced as the crank's balanced and then you kind of put the weights on with the connecting rod and the pistons. I don't know. I'm just kind of mumbling now or rambling. So what I'm gonna do is these are the weights I got. I got all my totals. Adding the heavier piston with the lighter connecting rod. Then I added the next lightest with the heaviest, and then the the next one up with the the heavier one. Even though it wasn't that big of a difference. Um, so here's the weight differences. Piston one is obviously my benchmark or my zero. Uh, piston 2 is 1 gram heavy, so I probably won't do anything with Piston 2. Piston 3 is 31. Piston 4 is 18. Piston 5 is 19. And Piston 6 is 17 grams heavier. So here's 
what the rods should weigh when I'm done, matched with the pistons that they're matched with. So I'm going to attempt to make them weigh that. So let's uh, let's get set up for that. All right, so I'm gonna set kind of like a, a little bit of benchmark. This is the first connecting rod that I have. Uh, it's the one that I'm not doing anything to. So I set it up on this jig that I got made and I'm gonna weigh probably the heavier end and then I'll just subtract that weight from the weight I have and then I'll know what the other end weighs. Um, so first thing is you want to make sure that this arm doesn't really move at all you want it to be pretty much centered when you take the weight off so I just kind of I lifted it up and then I kind of put it down and it's I'm watching it and it's not moving you just have to make sure it's not touching when you pick it up too so we ain't touching there and I put it down and it, it basically stays exactly where it is so uh, be gentle when you take it off that you don't disturb anything. So I'm going to turn my scale on. You're at zero, so let's try to slide this on. I'm moving anything. There we are 14. 89 so 1489 1489 so let's take uh let's take the next one what do you mean Oh, okay. That's pretty neat. I think I need this. Alright, go play with that. Fifteen oh seven. So this? this is number. This is number three. So one fifteen oh seven. So anyway, let's uh, so I'll subtract these numbers from the from the total weight. And then I should have the weight of the small side. And um, then I'll kind of know what side I want to take the weight off of. Because one, one end might be heavier than the other. It might not be the same. And then I'll know kind of which, which end to grind on. Alright, after doing some serious math, I don't know if I'm any closer to what I need to be than I was when I started. So, I, uh, I, factored, I figured out that all of the heavy ends or the big ends of the connecting rods are all about 70 to 71 percent the weight of the rod so i believe this to be about 30 percent so looking at these i noticed all when i subtracted all the uh the heavier or the big ends from the totals this is what i got for an average weight for the small one so the small one was 606 for the, the initial control one that we're using um the heaviest one from Japan was 628 on the heavy on the small side and then as we go down this one was 610 610 on number four 603 on number five 613 on number four so I started off with those numbers and I subtracted them from the total or from what the weight should be and then I got a weight here for what the, the larger end should weigh, which is what we still have on the scale. So some of these I'm not changing the weight of. Like, uh, I'm only going to change the weight of the small end on the really heavy rod. And I want to bring that down 
18 grams, so we're at 610, which will leave the weight of the rod at uh, 2117 grams. And then once I got the weight to that, so basically I'm going to take the, the little wheel off and I'm going to grind the small end until I get to that weight there. And then I can start grinding the big end until I get to this weight total. And then I'll know that I'm 30% small and 70% of the big end. I think I went 29 here to get it at 610, something like that. And then 71% here. So th those will be my final weights to get to the, the weight that we need. So that's what I'm, I'm going to do with the rest of them. So basically being that I know I'm not going to grind any of the smaller ends on any of them except for that, I can just grind on the bigger end and then just go to my final weight here. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, I think I noticed one of the reasons that the bigger end weighs so much is, see, that one's ground on the side and on the top. That one's ground a little bit on the top and they're not ground at all on the sides. And these are wider than this one. So I might grind here on, uh, on this one first to get our weight down. Or anything or push funny so I'm just gonna go slow 
All right, so I got all these things balanced. What was this one? This is number four. I had to get to 20.98. We are at 20.98. I didn't do anything with one and two. This is number six. So I had to get to 2101. We're pretty close. It was 2101, but close enough. And what was this one? This is number five. I had to get to 29.8 and 29.9. It said 29.8 before. Anyway, whatever. We're close enough. I'm not going to worry about a, worry about a gram. I might kind of doctor them up a little bit. Uh, this one that I had to get the, what, 35 the 40 grams off this one has been taking forever uh, so I ended up taking taking the um, the casting off the top there so I, I kind of so I uh, ground the sides where the other ones are ground and then I, I just kind of took the casting off the top and uh, so I got the top to where it needed to be and then I just been taking the weight off the bottom to get that one where it needs to be so I still have six grams left to bring that one down so I can balance the pack out and uh well that's what you get when you ask someone not to be nosy anyway so I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'll be done I'll pack them all up and take the pistons and everything and we can put them uh, in the engine so for a time reference, I started this probably like 10 o'clock. I started this probably around 10 o'clock and uh, it's like 4.30, it'll probably be 5 o'clock by the time I'm done. So it's it's taking quite a while. I have to keep, well I probably don't, I don't know if I have to keep, but I'm choosing to keep stopping to let it cool because I don't wanna, I can't just grind, grind, grind. Otherwise we're gonna heat these up and it's gonna distort with uh, the high temperatures. So I'm, I'm just doing like, maybe like 15 seconds at a time and then I'm letting it cool down um, when I had all four to do I could just kind of keep going along and if I went slow with each one of them it'd be cool by the time I got back to the first one but now that I'm down to one it, it's taking a lot longer uh, it's probably fine yeah it's probably fine yeah well it's probably the chlorine you're smelling Anyway, so that's where we're at. We're almost done. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't show everything about it, but I mean, basically, I just, I've been kind of just grinding on the weights on the bottom. So I just kind of put it right there and then just sort of run it back and forth until I get it down. I'm trying to keep it even so it's sort of balanced side to side. I don't think that's going to make a big difference, but that's what I'm trying to do. Um... So you can see like, how much came off the weights. Um, it would have been nice if I just got all of them the same weight or really close and I wouldn't have to do so much work. But because they were so far off to begin with is why I got to do all the work that I'm doing. So anyway, I guess if I had to recommend it again, I would because I didn't they didn't stock these. I had to have them shipped to me from Cummins so I called a place that that sells them they said they don't stock them so they sent them to me and they had them shipped to me from someplace else so they didn't stock them and I don't know where it was it wasn't anywhere near here um, the place I I ordered them through they were they're probably like an hour and a half an hour and 45 minutes away I mean I could have driven there but they would have just had six and I would have had to weigh them and say hey can you order six or more and then I'll send it it would have been just kind of a giant pain so I just decided to kind of balance these and we'll make them work. But had I got all the same to begin with, it probably would have been better. Um, these ran uh, about $130 a piece. And then I think it was like $40 shipping. Um, you'd probably be better off just trying to buy like a match set. Because by the time I'm into all of this, we're, we're looking at like almost a grand. So 
and I would not recommend rebuilding rods like I did previously because it would cost you just as much to rebuild some than to buy these. Um, I mean, maybe if you, I think I had them, the other ones that I kind of, I'm not using, they were quite pricey in the end. But I mean, if you get a good used set that is actually a good used set and you don't just get ripped off like I did, then you can put them in there for a couple hundred bucks, two hundred, two, three hundred dollars four maybe at the most and you should get like a good set but like I say I got kind of screwed on it I don't want to do that again so I just went with the newer ones or the rebuilt ones from Cummins and well you see how that went so a little time invested a little extra money but in the end at least I can say I did it right so anyway hope I can help somebody thanks for watching